Okay, we are picking back up where we left off last time, and we were in the middle of talking with this guy, getting information. And uh, we he apparently knows more about us than we do. New pen. Uh, there we go. Done. All right. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door-opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Mm. Why don't you just open the door? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. Ah, uh, he slams his fist together. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean, a weasel? A loud, blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Ah. Uh... Hmm. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. All right, I'm gonna say I'm gonna look into it, hoping that because of that bit of text earlier where, with my inner thoughts, uh, it says you could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand, then should you wish bend his efforts to your own. I'm hoping that means I could accept the task and then just not do it. I'll look into it. We need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. He smiles, obviously satisfied with how he planned it all out. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. I'm told the Union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. <laughs> Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy, honestly. No karma. Harry, you wound me, Harry. In the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. 
I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? Yes. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin 8. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. <laughs> I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa. That's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Uh, what happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Galmont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. Mm, he made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. <laughs> Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Joyce said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Joyce didn't mention any casserole. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. That much is true. His heart truly is in it. Though you wouldn't think so by looking at him. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Hmm. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Everard, Joy seems to think the union is lowballing her. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Are you sure? I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. You know who this guy reminds me of? The the, 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 I forget the character's name. The fat character from Jurassic Park that like sold out the company and then he ended up getting eaten by the spitter. He like, he like, he's the reason the whole park ended up like going down because he like turned off the electric fences and stuff like that. Dennis. Yeah, of course his name's Dennis. Yeah, this guy reminds me of the Dennis character. All right, let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock, Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. What's in the container outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Cavalsand crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. You should at least try convincing it. Uh, let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, 
Your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of Top time mentor. and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Hold on, could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Wait, the gun may have been bought from Roy. Nah, I don't need to give him that information. Because he might if he doesn't already have it, I shouldn't volunteer that info. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. We just leveled Get up. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. What do you mean? I have been looking for it. I just haven't found it yet. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. I'm looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. <laughs> Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. <laughs> He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age? Uh, I too am surprised by the resilience and athleticism of this tool I've been provided with. Tap my chest. Yes, yes, Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition, and I salute both your initiative and your physical prowess. Very impressive, Harry. Very impressive. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. I want to go over a couple things about me. Let's hear it, Harry. Do you know where I live? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st, and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long boy. way from home, but that's okay. <laughs> You're a boy. Do you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids? Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I think I do. I'd be a wonderful father. Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Let me get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. You don't feel like any of these things. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count or a beautiful man. Hmm. I feel like a Dubois, but not quite like a Harry. Something longer. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus. But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois. A real man's name. <sighs> Dude, I'm asking a guy I'm supposed to be interrogating where I live and how's my wife and does he have my name? <laughs> like, partner's like, oh my god. Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. What kind of cop doesn't say I am? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. See, if I say I'm sorry, then that proves I'm apologetic. What? I'm not apologetic, I'm confident. Well, you sure come off as very confident in all our interactions, Harry. You're a real man's man. That's right. All right. Other of stuff. course, Harry. Of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. 
You wanted something from me. Could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Hmm. Also, I studied the footprints at the crime scene. Worker boots. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. He picks up a handset of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. <laughs> that guy. He hangs up and turns back to you. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. All right, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding, but not too much. The big man raises his hand in farewell. The 15th Indo tribe. Thought complete. Because there was. The 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Forberg and North Jamrock, running from wild dogs in the valley, hiding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring of phone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Cylinder. The rest of the kids are dead now. Car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. Okay. Plus 10 cents for every green orb clicked. Learning cap for Savoir Fair raised to six. Okay. Start internalizing that thing. Alright, what's going on here? Alright, I have a level up point. I think I'll save it a bit for until I need it. Getting the body down. Go to Measurehead on the gates and ask him to get the body down. Get the key to the weasel's door from Manana. I don't know that I want to actually do that. Keep searching for the caller. Despite lacking any leads, this might take time. Find a way into the secret passage in the whirling. Visit apartment 2B sometime after 2100. It's currently 1300. Cello Frag's voice is doing in this game. <laughs> Wait, you think that guy is Cello Frag's voice? No. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with all. No trouble at all, mister. Nothing new. Okay. So we can go through that door now. All right, quick save. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. Oh my God. You have really let yourself go. Everard told you to help us get the body down from the tree. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. 
You're so noble, Measurehead. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the Union's side. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hablugu. Okie dokie. Wait here while Measurehead goes. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. Dude, that walk. That swagger. The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Apparently so. Cool. I like men with guns and power. Crap, I'm out I'm of guns. I'll you, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah. Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I also wish I could see it. Do you guys think he just, like, snapped the branch that the body was on? Look at you! RCM Rent-A-Cops! Guarding that bridge like Everard's lapdogs. Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale. And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? <laughs> Why did you just... Kim just slipped a fashion insult into that sentence? Uh, that's none of your business. A shrill laughter interrupts you, echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. No. Then the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner. What if he comes here him, carrying the body? Past him. Nope. All right, so he probably just left it on the ground. <coughs> The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Thank you for your cooperation, Measurehead. Farewell, lamb sandwich. <laughs> you are a union man from now on. Ah. Uh, leave. Still a ham sandwich, apparently, chat. All right, let's go check the tree. Yep, he just broke the whole branch down. I was right. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Well, it's down. Celebrate in a more reserved manner. Mr. Measurehead has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. Field autopsy? Yes. One. Investigation of the scene. Hey, Two, we got a cut initial open. examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up. Uh, <laughs> don't we have someone else to uh cut his shit open? It's not about cutting. <laughs> and no, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain, from autopsy to cleanup to social work. Uh, wait, honorary rank of detective? An honor and a burden attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able, usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. 
I don't think I'm a detective. You are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. First, exactly, uh, what is exactly a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Well, I've already got gloved hands. Uh, uh, clap your gloved hands. Let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. Okay. I'll ask you when I need you to. For the most part, maybe I should handle the contact and you take notes? We just fill this in, right? Show him the red field autopsy form in your ledger. That's right. 5 XP. You knew it because you inspected your ledger. The lieutenant is relieved you know the protocol. <sighs> Open your ledger to the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Begin one assistant. That's you. Uh, right initials, HDB. No, wait, this is a police uniform. I probably need the full name. Harry Dubois. <laughs> Raphael Ambrosius Costa. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... Cor coroner's case number. KK57-0803. Dot 0815. How do you know that? KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals precinct 57. Oh. Followed by his date, oh. 0803, and time of arrival, 0815, on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not to you. Quick chat. Is this August 3rd or is this March 8th? <laughs> I'll split the community in half. Shouldn't we file the coroner's case uh, under... Actually, no, 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 no. I'm just going to say write it down. Next. Three, name. N.A. Next. Date of birth. N.A. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Right. 50. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Race. Mondial. Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. <laughs> fucky, fucky! <laughs> the little monster exclaims energetically. Male. Pigs can have sex. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of birth. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Right, 040351. Okay. So it's. They're doing day, month, year. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. 10. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. A strange word. Treatment. What exactly is treatment, anyway, in this case? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. How did you not know that? Aren't you a cop? You're leaving a weak impression here. Say something sure-handed. I'm not so sure. Didn't the footprints look like he was carried over? They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained duck walkers. He places his hand on the dead man's chest as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, like drizzle. 
there is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker.